God, you're good. Oh, Lord, you're so good. Lord, you're so good, and the devil is such a liar. He's such a liar. Lord, your, your means is creation. Your means go beyond ours. It's power. It's Holy Ghost. It's tongues of fire. It's miracles, signs, and wonders, creation, all of these things. And the devil's means is media. Fear, that's it. Yeah. And in your presence, Lord, we glorify you. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Sylvia, come or I'll just spend the next hour saying how good God is. Yes, good morning. A lot can sure happen in 21 days. Wow. So I'm just going to give you a few of the highlights that touched me during this fast. It's actually been one of my best fasts, and I have to say that it just became the very first day it started off with dealing with offense. I have a few people in my heart that I carry that just kind of gnaw at me, and, and every time I hear their name and every time I, I would hear their voice even or, or anything about them, there was something in my spirit that would raise up, and I'm like, but Lord, I got rid of these people so many times. How many times do I have to keep getting rid of them? And again, the 70 times 7 came that I have to keep getting rid of them, but not only just rid of them, but I also have to bless them. So I had to pray for them. But then I was also reminded on my drive into church one day that he loves them just as much as he loves me. And that was a pretty good revelation that he died on the cross for them just as much as he died for my sins. And therefore, I have to love them as well. So, and I went um, cross-country skiing that afternoon and I was in this path and our neighbors were got a bulldozer through there in the fall and there was all of these trees that had all of the roots exposed and said Lord that's what I need you to do I want you to go into my heart and I want you to bulldoze through my heart and expose the roots take out every single root of offense that I've been carrying um, over the years and I had to bring up names and forgive and pray over them and bless them and that was the definitely a stepping stone for receiving the blessings and coming into this fast and so part two of my blessing coming into the fast was um, I was thinking about what Pastor Darren had said about the river and that how we have to go into the river and just let go of the bank and when we first said that the first few times I thought well it's a really good message but I didn't apply it to myself because it wasn't for me at that time and then the Holy Spirit was working in my spirit and um really felt that there was a time in my life where when I was like 19 I was going to be a tour guide for a river raft on the St. Mary's River in Crown Brook and the way that they teach you is by jump you have to jump into the water and if you can get onto the raft you got your certificate so it's like okay so I had to jump in to the water and there was actually even this brown greenish snake swimming beside me in the St. Mary's River. I didn't even know swim like snakes swam. So, but anyways, it was swimming beside me and I did everything in my power to get in that boat because I did not like that snake in there. Um, but I was reminded of that that's why sometimes we don't want to be in the rough waters because it's not fun, it's not pleasant and it's and there could be snakes in there or there could be um, log jams and sweepers and and that's you know all of the things that could be that my head would be worried about but then um, Pastor Darren's word about let go of the bank reminded me that I was laying on the floor in my house and I was listening to the song I surrender all and that song wrecks me just about every time and I just had heard the voice let go of the bank let go of the bank and so I'm like, okay. And I actually like physically had to picture myself letting go of the bank and going in the river. And our God is a mighty God that he walks on water. So even if there are things in that water that we don't like, he's walking on that water with us. And even if uh, there's a coat or whatever, he doesn't put us through the rough waters to drown us, but to cleanse us. And it's a great place to be in that river. But to let go, it was not a pretty picture. I looked pretty pathetic. <laughs> 
so it was a, a pretty interesting experience. Um, but the other part on top of that, that really spoke to me as well as I was dealing with a lot of stuff in my in my life there was I mean life happens and I have carrying a bunch of people and and um, I was overwhelmed with worry one night a lot of worry and I was having this pity party for myself and I overheard the Holy Spirit again remind me of something I heard a long time ago that you can't be powerful and pitiful at the same time and that God doesn't join in a pity party. But I was really enjoying that pity party. I hardly, but it was not a good place to be because you lose your power when you just sit there feeling sorry for yourself and oh, poor me, and oh, what about me, and all of these things. We don't have room for the power to work. And so I had to release that power over to him. So I was just at the sink cutting vegetables for this pasta salad this week. And heard really deep in my spirit and it said am I not big enough and the thing I love about that the most is that he answers his question in the question that I am I am big enough because he is the God the I am and so that really touched me this week because I really needed that that word from him and to hear that yes he is big enough for me he's big enough for my family my kids my dog my any problem that I have in my life all the people that I'm carrying in my heart he is big enough and the song that came in my spirit was my God is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my God cannot do uh, hold on I think I want you to pray that was uh that was really good. I want you to pray that surrender, the let go of the bank. That's, that's a good one. Yeah, it says in your word, Lord, that we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I thank you that all of us have testimonies throughout this last 21 days that we could share and we can say of things that you have done for us. I thank you, Lord, that you are just going to give us more revelations and more breakthroughs. And even when it's it hurts and it's painful and it's not a pleasant experience, I thank you that you are our lifeguard that walks on water, that you are there to pull us up out of the raft and bring us into your boat, Lord. And we thank you that we are on a safe, safe, secure path with you and that we can surrender all to you. And that means all, not just a little bit, not just this, not just that, but all that we can lay it all down at your feet, Lord, because you are mighty God and you are mighty to save. You do love us. You do hear us and you want to see us free in the water and to splash and to play and to, to smile and to have joy. And may we have that because your word does say that your burden is light and easy, Lord. And we thank you that you can take our burdens from us, that you are taking that yoke of all of our necks and that you are sharing it with us and that we are not in it alone and you care for every single detail in our lives to the little itty bitty detail is yours in Jesus name and maybe we surrender to you maybe let go of that bank and just flow in your presence Lord where there is joy where there is peace where there is hope and there is faith and may you grow it and grow it and grow it in Jesus name Thank you, Lord. Give her a hand. That was really good. We have time for uh, one more short testimony if anyone has anything. Sonia has something. Those stairs are fun. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, for me, I've been learning a lot about the story of David in the Bible and I mean as a Sunday school teacher that's like one of the main stories out there um, but what I never noticed before was everyone's like oh my gosh that was amazing that victory you know he defeated Goliath um, but then you realize like that's not the end of his life right like after he defeats Goliath it's like oh right David goes through so much other stuff after that victory, after that big victory, right? And it's looking at it being like, you know what? 
sometimes we have these goals and these things that we want to have victory over. But then when we have that victory, it's like, well, what do I do now? Like for me, that's how I am, right? And God's like, you know what? It's victory after victory after victory, right? Like he'll continue to prepare you and take you through, right? So I just wanted to encourage you guys this morning that um, even if you feel like you're stuck in between, almost like you come off of a big victory and then you're coming down low, God's going to take you through again. He's going to pull you through again. He's going to train you up to conquer whatever comes your way. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just heard the kids. It was so cute. <laughs> uh, God, I thank you that we are not weak and defeated, but that we are victorious in you. I thank you that everywhere we set our feet, God, we will have favor in Jesus' name. I thank you that we won't quit, Lord, after one victory, God, but we'll just keep going, keep trusting, keep walking with you and believing that this life isn't over after one victory or one failure, but that we can keep going with you and keep trusting in you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, I also want to thank you for everyone that gives and has sown in this season. And Lord, I'm just reminded again, and Lord, it seems to be the theme, how Isaac sowed in the beginning of the year in that land and in the same year reaped a hundredfold return and God blessed Lord, I'm, I'm thanking you for that wisdom that's from you to put on other people. In fact, all of these people. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for every giver, every soon-to-be giver, everyone who's contemplating, Lord, your goodness and your peace. Let that guide them in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I'm asking again, we're, Lord, we're talking about testimonies. Thank you for the testimony of God pouring out in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that with you, actually. There is an opportunity that is not from the pastor, and it is not from the church, but it is from the Word of God. And if you would receive that opportunity to sow in a land in the beginning of the year, then God is responsible for the hundredfold return, and I've never seen him fail yet. So I'm leaving that. In fact, Lord, I give that to the people. I believe it's fully from you. And God, that you would give the wisdom, not in fear or anxiousness, but by the Spirit, that those who would heed it and take it, Father, would reap that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we give praise and worship a hand? That was really good. Thank you, Lord. Father, God hears your voice. In case you're, you're wondering, like we said at the beginning, the Lord hears your voice. He hears you. He hears you. I know life happens, and it can get pretty darn weird, but he hears you. He hears you. He hears you. And uh, Lord, take the word. Just, just take it, God, and put it in the hearts of people. Lord, that was powerful, wonderful worship. Thank you for the thickness of your presence. Now, Lord, let the word go. Lord, I, I just choose to release it even before that you would take it and you would deliver it. And, Father, thank you that the thief, we bind him up now in Jesus' name and every, everything that would rob. But, Lord, let it be rich and let it go into the hearts of the peoples. Jesus' name, amen. He hears you. And that's really the reason that we fast, is so that you can hear him. And that's why we fast the loud voices like the media and fear. And sometimes you fast yourself because yourself can be pretty loud. Amen? And sometimes when self wants some food, food can be pretty loud. That's why we fast. 
can you put up, please, um, Hebrews 3? I've got a word for you. Uh, there is fully a reset that is available from the Lord in this season, and I think the world robbed it and tried to turn it into a fearful thing, but, but the Lord is taking it and turning it into something that we can all grasp. There truly is a reset that's happening, and it's in and of the Spirit, and it's for His children, but it doesn't involve fear. And it doesn't involve anxiousness, and it doesn't involve that uh, you're going to lose something. All things have been given to us, amen? Now look at this, Hebrews 3 says this, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, and then it goes on to say this, uh, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial, in the wilderness. That's all true, but I want to focus on this. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, say this with me, say today. today. And then he says, if you'll hear my voice. And why is he saying that? Because there's competition for your ears. And the competition's pretty loud. And if you're, if you're catching the news, man, I don't even know how many news channels there are now. I, there was like three or four big ones, but now there's <laughs> global, there's everything. And all, all of it's spelling the same thing, you know. You should fear. In fact, if you have a shovel, you should probably start digging and put your head in the ground because it's, it's just bad. It's just bad. That's why we fast. Amen? Today, if you'll hear his voice, church, today, if you hear his voice, because he hears you, but today, if you would hear his voice and what he's saying, um, and if you're wondering what his voice sounds like, it's different than the other ones. Here, here, listen. There's no guilt in it. There's no shame in it. There's no condemnation in it. There's no panic in it. There most definitely is no attack in it. And he doesn't sound like you need to do this to this other person. He sounds like love. How do I know if I'll hear? Listen to this. Mary. Jesus is lost. As far as she knows, everything's lost. Jesus comes back, but he doesn't look the same as in his resurrected. He doesn't look like she knows. But the moment he wants his voice to be known, oh, she knows. He just goes like this, Mary. And <gasps> she's broke immediately. Rabbi or teacher or whatever she wants, whatever it is. But she's broke, immediately grasped onto him so tight. Why? Because she knows his voice. I don't know if I've ever heard of it. It doesn't matter. When he speaks, you will know his voice. Look at Paul, the apostle. Man, he was on his sin fest. In fact, he had, he had recruited a whole bunch of guys. Guys, let's just go. Let's kill God and all the people of God. God blows him off the horse. And says to him just a couple times, Saul, like that. And, and even in his wickedness, goes like this, who are you? And then he says, Lord? Question mark. Oh, you know when he talks. You know when God speaks. Well, how would it he made you? No one else did. He made you. You know his voice. And when he speaks, that's why Paul's saying this today. If you'll hear his voice, and it's not that God won't speak to you, it's this. Will you put aside the other ones? And this is where you do come in. Will we stop listening so much to all the loud voices? How do I know what the other ones are? Because they make you tight. Make your shoulders hurt. And they always blind you to the person beside you. Jesus' voice does not do that. And Paul goes on to say this, see that you don't reject the one who speaks today. No condemnation in that. He's, he's basically saying like this, man, God's talking today. He's talking to you. He's talking to his church. He is the reset. He's the refreshing. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to... 
uh, give you just, listen, this is the power of the gospel. If you've ever asked Jesus to come into your heart, here it is. Now, now listen to me, and if you need to close your eyes, close your eyes. But don't, don't just go, what, what are these words he's saying? If you've accepted Jesus, you are, hear it with your heart, completely forgiven. Oh, no, I did this. No. You, you take your, your arguments, you take it and let it bash into the word. You are fully pleasing. You are totally accepted. Oh, my, these are just bumping into things. You see, they hit. The, the word hits. It doesn't return void. It hits. And we're also performance oriented. No, I pleased him last week when I was doing good. No, that's not the gospel. If that is the gospel, what you're saying, then salvation is limited to your performance. You are deeply loved. And you are complete in him. Because the wrath of God that comes like we can't even, don't even have the words for it. That wrath that comes because the sin that was on you and on me went right past you. And that wrath hit Jesus. All of it hit him. And he paid the full price for that wrath that belongs to me and belongs to you. That's called atonement, payment, done. He took it all, amen, so that you're set free and delivered. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, look, look at this. I, you're going to have to say this with me because this is one of my favorite sayings. Say, deal with it. Okay, uh, stay with me, Adrian. Put up Ephesians 1.5. I want to lay a little bit of a foundation here. Okay, having predestined us to adoption, so now your family, deal with it. Amen? As sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, here's what you're going to have to deal with. It was his good pleasure to save you. Especially 2021. We need to deal with some stuff and get it right. Stop looking in the mirror. You please him. I'm not looking for your agreement. I'm looking for you to deal with this. Put up Romans, please. Romans 8. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved you. It's okay on a Sunday morning. Monday morning? It's a little bit different. How to scrap with your wife or someone or said something you shouldn't have done or reacted to a driver and all of a sudden your salvation's in question because you think the eyebrows of the Lord have gone down on you. Real stuff, my friends. You can even read it in reverse. Because he loved you, you are more than a conqueror. Say deal with it. Do Galatians 2, please. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. Not theologically, by the way. He loves you. This is the deal with it of the church. When the church accepts this is when the full power of his reset and refreshing hits and washes over. By the way, it doesn't make you pride-filled. It actually makes you quite humble. It removes you from being a worm and going, I'm not good because blah, blah, blah. Don't you, haven't you seen my marriage? I have a good marriage. <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of what people would say. Don't you know what I've done with my children? But I love you and you are accepted. No, 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 you can't. You can't. In, in, in God's presence, you can. But on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and if something happens with your kids or you have a scrap or it didn't go well or your kids have done something that really embarrasses you, 
and he comes and tells you, I'm fully pleased in you, and you go, <sighs> and the enemy comes. And he encourages you, yes, that's right. Look what you did. You see how you screwed that up? You're right. And then all of a sudden, without knowing it, your salvation has something to do with your performance and your image to other people. But I love you. Oh, you can't. Oh, yes, I did and do. You are pleasing to me. Oh, it's not what you do, Darren. You please me. That's why the kingdom has to be received like a child. Because us adults got reasonings. Kids don't. Amen? Bunch of kids. Thank you, Lord. Now, we're going to do something here. We're going to switch gears a little bit because I, I want to show you something. Um, I'm laying a foundation for what we're going to talk about a little bit. Can you put up, please, John 10? I give them eternal life, and they shall, by the way, never perish. Amen? Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Say nothing. No one. There is no one. There is no one. There is nothing that can take you out of the Lord. Shut up, religion. Take that legalism. Take that performance. Deal with the word. I'm not good. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. You didn't do anything. No, I did 50 cartwheels. That's why the Lord accepted me. You didn't do anything. You did nothing. The only thing you did was act desperate and have an open heart in one moment and go, Lord, I need you. I confess that you are Lord with my mouth and I believe in my heart. And the Lord says, you're mine. From that moment on, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. And no one, no one, no one, no one can take you out of the Lord's hands. Yeah, we're not talking about your performance and messing up, but I'm a bad Christian. I love that quote, but there's no such thing as a bad Christian, but there is such thing as bad habits. And those can be changed, and very, very often not by your own strength. This is real Jesus. This is real salvation. Or else my performance has something to do with his salvation. Romans 8, please. 838. This this is this is my my the pinnacle of what we're talking about right now. For I am see this, I'm persuaded. And actually, if you're not, I'm hoping that the word gets into you and that it will persuade you, just because it's a lot older than you and it keeps going. I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor man. I mean, he, he, he nails this. And if you want to bring an excuse to the Lord, wow. No, 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 he's saying this. There's the death, life, and then he goes into this, past the things that we can't even see. By the way, angels, principalities, or powers, these invisible things, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth. And then he goes into this as well. In case he's left anything open, any created thing. There is absolutely nothing that can separate you from Jesus. Say nothing. Man, please give the Lord a clap. This is, wow. Listen, I get scared too. I get scared and the Lord has to come, but it's his word that refreshes again. Oh, man, I messed it up. Man, I did this. I, I said that. Oh, my past, I, I blew it. And the Lord's saying, there's nothing, nothing. There's not an angel. There's not a devil. In fact, life or death itself can't do it. Something that is a created thing can't separate you from me. And here's where I'm going to go with this. There's a lot of fear right now in this world over vaccines. Oh, got quiet. There is 
nothing. Nothing, nothing. Height, depth, angels, devils, created things. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of Jesus. Amen? You catching me on this? Listen, when it comes to the season that we're in, if, if you want to take a vaccine, take a vaccine. If you don't want to take a vaccine, don't take a vaccine. But if you are basing your salvation on a vaccine, then we're making a proclamation that he wasn't enough. According to your conscience, do this. And if you want to do this, then do this. But I want to tell you that this vaccine at this point anyways, it can get to the place where it's going to start to fulfill scripture. But right now, it's a vaccine. It's a medicine. And according to your conscience, do what you feel to do. But, but please don't be in fear and be concerned that if I take this or do this, all of a sudden, my salvation is at risk. When the Lord is saying this, there's not an angel, there's no death, there's no life, there's no created thing. There is nothing that can separate you from my love. Can I get an amen? Amen. The cross was actually uh, very complete. And, and you're actually, you're really, really saved. Amen. Amen. So now listen to this. There's, there's a lot of quoting going on. Um, Revelation 13, 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 2, and talking about, well, there's a last day coming, and there's a, there's a mark of the beast coming, and there's, there's all of these things, and very true. Very, very true. Now, I want you to hear this as well. When the Antichrist comes, and by the way, he's probably fully alive right now, and the mark of the beast and the image and all of this stuff is fully real. Amen? Amen? Yes. When the Antichrist comes, and he's probably alive now, he will be the most powerful person on this earth. He will have ten nations that follow him. There will be no one like him as influential. He, no one who has as big of a following with countries, a confederation, and all of these things. He will have a spokesperson called a false prophet who is with him as well. He's going to bring an image with him for people to worship. Now, I don't even know what that looks like. I'm assuming it's something that's electronic. I don't know. But when it comes, he will demand that everyone worship him and this image that he has. And if you do not... It's, it's just a repeat of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego all over again. And if you don't worship his image, you'll die. And this is what he's going to force to do. And then there's going to be this. There's going to be a mark. You cannot, you cannot trade. You can't eat. You can't do any uh, financing. You can do nothing without his mark that he makes one take on the wrist or in the forehead. Not a vaccine in the arm. A vaccine can't separate you from Jesus. But here's what can separate you from Jesus. And this is what this mark of the beast is actually all about. When you go like this, I know I chose to forgive and to accept Jesus. But from this point on, I'm denouncing Jesus. And I'm, I'm going after this guy who says he can make everything great. He can, he can remove all of my debt. He can bring all of that. St I'm, I'm going to receive and accept him, that is the moment. That's a sin right there that the Bible calls uh, uh, not forgivable. It calls blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is calling evil good and good evil. But, my friends, a vaccine is not going to put you into hell. Amen? Amen. 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 If you want to take a vaccine, take a vaccine. If you don't want to take a vaccine, don't take a vaccine. But the time that we're coming into, that's, that'll be a perilous time. But right now, this is not that time. Do you receive this? 
Do you receive that there's nothing that's going to pull you away from Jesus? Do you receive that you're forgiven, that you're deeply loved? I'm going to read it one more time. You're completely loved. Hold on. Whoa. Please stand with me. You're completely loved. Father, I'm, I pray right now that your word would pierce hearts. And even for everyone that's listening today, that your word would pierce hearts. And Lord, if that requires a temper tantrum or a shout out or a Jacob moment to wrestle with you, then Lord, so be it. But Father, I'm going to speak what you speak. You're completely forgiven. You are fully pleasing. You are totally accepted. You are deeply loved. And you are complete in him. Uh, stay there because there's a, there's a refreshing and a reset that belongs to the children of God. There's a refreshing that belongs to his kids. And there's an Acts 2 refreshing. A move of the Holy Spirit once again. And I, I want to tell you, uh, even as Sylvia spoke today, of letting go of that bank and receiving the good things that God has for you in this season. Father, I, I ask this for for every person that has come today, every person that's listening online or is yet to listen. Father, I just pray a truth right now that people would receive and accept the goodness of God, the power of your word, the power of your salvation, but so much more in this very season. Holy Spirit, would you come upon your people fresh and new? Lord, I want to speak as well that your people hear your voice. They hear the voice of the good shepherd and they will not hear the voice of the stranger. Lord, a stranger tries to come in another way, but Father, I want to thank you right now that there's only one shepherd, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for anointing the ears of your people. Thank you for anointing the hearts of your people and the eyes of your people. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you that you have us and you take care of us. And there's no height or depth or principality or angels or anything that can separate us from your love. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Angie, I want you to come and pray. doesn't know the Lord yet. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I know, and I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. When we were worshiping, um, you know, it's just so awesome to be in the house of God. It just really is. I mean, I love that those of you online can join, and we had to do that last week, and it was amazing, but there's something about being together, and um, in the house of worship, it's like, you can just hear things clearly. You separate yourself from everything, and you come in here, and, and so one thing that came up, and I looked it up, is called thanatophobia, and it's a fear of dying. And I thought, oh, I'm going to look into that. And I'm actually going to do a message about that because it's just everywhere that we are. And Darren has spoke about it before. And, it, you know, in Hebrews, it's like people were held bondage their whole life for fear of death is what it says in Hebrews 2. And it's like we're in this time again. And so even with, the, you know, the vaccine or the mask or the this or the that, there's all these things that pressure us that everything's up to me. Not God. Everything's up to me. 
I got to do the right thing. And if I don't do the right thing, then my salvation's in question. Or I've disqualified myself. Or it's a sin issue. And so I think maybe just today, if we could even just pray this part. So for you online and for you in-house, when we let go of the bank, we let go of the control to run our own life, make all our decisions and hope it all works out at the end. But we really say, Jesus, you're enough. If I die, I die. If I live, I live. Paul thought it would be better to be with Christ, but he said it's better that I stay here for you. But if, he, if you give me a choice, I'm going to go to Jesus. Like the Jesus train just sounds really great. And it does. And I think sometimes as Christians, we're like, okay, doot, doot. Like, could you just come now? It's getting pretty messed up down here. <laughs> but the truth is, is that there's people who need to hear the message of Christ that's in you. Amen. So uh, for you in the house and you online, I'm just going to uh, lead you in a prayer of laying down control of our life and even the fear of death. And that might be letting go of what we have here. If I accept Jesus, does that mean that and whatever we fill in the blanks with, that's still us controlling it. So if you, if that resonates in your heart, I want you to put your hand on your heart. And if you want to pray with me, you can. If you're not, if you're like, I need to take this to the Lord. I don't know what she's going to say. She's going to lead me in something. I'm telling you what I'm going to lead you. I'm going to lead you in a renouncing of the lie that I'm in control of my life. And the fear of death that has held me in bondage. And then I'm going to invite Jesus into the heart. So say with me, say, Father, I ask for your forgiveness for being in control of everything. I thought that's what I was supposed to do. The news tells me I have to be in control. The world tells me I have to do everything right. But you tell me and nothing, no thing, can remove me from your love. I renounce fear of death by any means. <laughs> and I welcome you. I invite you, author of life, King Jesus, you who made me, you knit me together. You who know me, I invite you, come into my heart. Come into every chamber of my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Now just wait a moment there. Lord, I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to miss you. I surrender my plans to you, and I pick up your plans for my life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Love each other. That's his command. Love them, love each other. So for all of you that are listening online, we're giving each other here a virtual hug and a virtual handshake and high five, all that. Yeah. Lord bless you. Text someone, email someone, Facebook thingy someone. And uh, yeah, love each other. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. We'll be starting a Bible study, I believe, in two weeks, and it'll be on the kingdom of God Wednesday night, Facebook Live. Amen.